Hello everyone, back to the to today's second video, We're going to have a look at the weather for the next week to 10 days, or today's second video, that will take us to the start of November, we actually go uh, to the first day of November, day 10 uh, today, so we've got a bit of a drier slot at the moment, make the most of it, because I think rain is going to be coming back through the second half uh, this week, actually as early as so tonight, tomorrow in the far northwest, and gradually rain will get more widespread over the coming days. And uh, it looks quite unsettled as we go through to the end of the week. Into the weekend and next week, we might see some high pressure again, but where that high pressure is sitting, causing all sorts of problems in the model output, we could either have a relatively mild end to October, or we might have quite a cold end to October. I'll tell you for everything that's going on there uh, very shortly. Just say that the East Central 30 day look ahead has been released for the UK and the rest of Europe too. So um, have a look at that and see what's going on uh, with that one. Right, so we're going to start off with the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles for the next couple of weeks. The red line is the 30-year upper air temperature average for Manchester. So very close to average at the moment. We're going to see a drop in the temperature coming up at the end of the week. It's going to go quite a lot colder. Also associated with some very wet weather as well. There may be a little bit of hill snow, can you believe, through some parts of Wales and northern England on Friday. After that, there is a gradual lift up in the temperature, you'll see. Um, but a lot of scatter within that. So uh, a lot of these ensemble members down here are keeping things pretty cold going out to the end of October, start of November. That's 1st of November just there. Gradually, these ensemble members are lifting up. So by the time you get through to the beginning of November, it looks like most of them are milder. But a significant minority actually keep things cold through this first week of November. And even the ones that are lifting the temperature up for a day or two in early November then start dropping again uh, as we go through the first week of November. So overall, I would say the outlook appears to be quite cool, really. Maybe even at times fairly cold over the next couple of weeks with milder interludes here and there. Uh, precipitation wise, so a couple of drier days today and just about hanging on to that for, for Manchester tomorrow, but other areas will have increased risk of rain even tomorrow. More about that in a moment. And uh, then as we go into the second half of the week, uh, when it gets much more unsettled, that's a bit of a deluge forecast for Friday. Heavy rain along with a significant drop in temperature. And there uh, could be a bit of hill snow in with that. And then just looking rather unsettled, you have to say, even going through the first week of November. There's no sign of a sustained period of dry weather in what is a very unsettled autumn. Temperature anomalies are colder than average from the 22nd uh, to the 30th of October. We don't see that all that often, or we haven't seen it that often in recent weeks and months. But there we go. It's a cold and average temperature anomaly for the UK and for Ireland as well in uh, the week ahead. Precipitation anomalies from 22nd of October to the 30th of November. Wetter than average in parts of England and Wales, or sort of average to wetter than average. Uh, drier than average though through Scotland, uh, Northern Ireland and many parts of Northern England. So quite a quite an interesting uh, anomaly there. Uh, big differences over a relatively short uh, over a relatively short um area right so that's how things looking on friday very complicated pattern for friday so we talked about this in yesterday's video we've got an area of above average height sitting to our south across spain and france that's trying to drag up warm air from the south we've got this deep area of low pressure to the north of scotland uh, and a ridge of high pressure towards Greenland. Quite a weakish ridge, but it is there. And it's trying to push down much colder air from the north. <coughs> Excuse me. In between, we have got a trailing and strung out weather front that goes right way back into the Atlantic. And this weather front is developing a wave along it, an area of low pressure just there is running along the front, marking the boundary between the warm air to south and the cold air to the north. Now, as we go through the course of Friday, we're going to see that low pressure becoming quite a significant feature. There's the upper air temperature for 6 o'clock in the morning on uh, Friday, so quite cold for many of us, actually, 
um, first thing on Friday. But then that way develops into quite a significant area of low pressure through Friday. That means a lot of heavy rain with it. Gale force winds uh, up the up up the channel on the southern side of that low and colder air digging in from behind on the northern side of that low there's the upper air temperature big contrast in temperatures on friday and uh, the heaviest of rain will be along the boundary of that temperature contrast and on the northern side of that uh, wet weather there is a risk of a little bit of snow um particularly over high ground of uh, northern England and also North Wales. But that area of wet weather is being moved a little bit north and south with time. And yet through to Saturday, that system has gone. It's a major area of low pressure then sitting across some of the parts of Norway. We're into a cold and showery run of uh, northwest winds there. The minus five south ice firm is flooding in across the country, so cold air being pushed in on those northwesterly winds. And then as we go into the end of the weekend and early next week, high pressure then reaches across the country will be within cold air, producing uh, probably quite significant for the time of year overnight frost. However, as we go through the course of next week, this particular GFS run then wants to shift the high pressure over central parts of Europe and pull up this balmy southerly wind as we go to the end of uh, October. So this is the last day of October 31st and we finish it on a very mild note with uh, warm air wafting up from the south before then we collapse the ridge and go off and running into a flat westerly flow bringing wet weather in back in from off the Atlantic and that's how we finish up with this GFS run as far as we can go is to Thursday the 7th of November where we're looking unsettled showery and probably by that point quite cool as well. Uh, this is the precipitation type forecast from weatheroutlook.com for Friday. So we start Friday mainly dry, but there is wintry showers across the northern western parts of Scotland. And then through the course of Friday, here comes that heavy rain moving across the Atlantic. We've got those bright colours. That's indicating really wet weather. And this uh, sort of pink purple, <coughs> excuse me, this sort of pink purple hatched area across parts of North Wales and to the south of England, also across the hills of Ireland. Uh, that is where the model is forecasting sleet or snow. Now, as we go through into Friday afternoon, Friday evening, very wet across many parts of England and Wales. Really heavy rain uh, with those yellow colours. Uh, and there's the area of snow across parts of northern England and down into the Welsh Mountains. Now, this is going to be primarily high ground. Uh, we'll know more when it comes into the high resolution time frame of the high res models, of course. But... Um, at the moment, I will think this is primarily high ground, sort of 500 metres and above that kind of area. But we will keep a close eye on it. Um, so some heavy snow potentially over the hills and mountains of northern England and North Wales. Otherwise, very wet across England and Wales. And uh, uh, sort of winter showers for northwest of parts of Scotland. That all gets out of the way overnight Friday and Saturday. And then we go into those wintry showers. Uh, as we go into Saturday itself. That's how the GFS was forecast things. This is the GEM. So again, for Friday, same idea. We've got this uh, trading weather front through the country and out into the Atlantic, bringing more wet weather. Now, the GEM is a little bit different. It's midnight Saturday. At this point, the GFS is pushing that front away, but the GEM still has it actually strung out in that sort of position. So still very wet even into Saturday with the GM. And then it starts to shift winds round to the south as we get through to sunny. So this is all very, very different to what the GFS is showing. At this point, the GFS wants to be quite cold. Um, the GM is bringing up much milder or even quite warm southerly winds initially. But then we start to push these colder winds through early next week from the Atlantic. So this is a really uncertain pattern, uh, obviously. We finish up with the GM uh, taking high pressure up towards Iceland and Greenland and pulling down quite a cold northerly wind. That's how you look at day 10 with the GM actually reinforcing uh, the Greenland high. So uh, at this point, of course, the GFS is wafting up quite warm southerly winds, but the GM is pulling down pretty cold northerly winds with this mid-Atlantic ridge and taking the block up towards Greenland. So that's a different solution indeed. And it takes longer to get colder with the GM. 
yeah, but it would be a more sustained cold, definitely a more locked in type cold with that um, big Greenland high setting up by day 10. This is how the ECMWF is looking. So again, it's the same idea for Friday. We've got this weather system and front that's straight out trading off into the Atlantic that develops an area of low pressure along it. Maybe a couple of areas of low pressure. It's midnight Saturday, so we've got one low, little loads of air clearing to North Sea, but another one looks like it's developing down to the southwest approaches, marking the boundary between very mild and cold air. Of course, there's the upper air temperature showing England and Wales relatively mild, looking a lot colder across Scotland. Uh, by the time you get through to midnight on Sunday, that uh, system is pushing away to our south and we're turning wind into the north. So uh, this is more in line with what the GFS is showing, a little bit different, but more in line with the GFS bringing down cold winds from the north by the end of the weekend into early next week. And then we sort of see high pressure tending to be sitting just to our west for the early part of next week, bringing in pretty chilly winds from the north or northeast. There's the upper air temperature showing that. It certainly looks cold enough for overnight frost for the the early part of next week. Heading up towards day 10, that's how we look, so we keep this mid-Atlantic ridge going, but unlike what the GM shows, we don't take that mid-Atlantic ridge up to Greenland and set up a proper Greenland high, so it's just pretty cool, but mostly dry with winds coming in around the top of that high from the northwest. This is the precipitation forecast based on that ECM run from tamecho.com starting today. So plenty of dry weather around today, but the far northwest of Scotland where there is some rain. Overnight tonight, it turns wetter across western Scotland and uh, northern Ireland, wetter and windier. A little bit of patchy rain coming into the southeast, of course, of tomorrow afternoon. That gets heavier overnight Wednesday into Thursday. Thursday could actually be quite a wet day in this southeastern corner and further northwest got more outbreaks of rain there too so you see this window of uh of drier weather is closing already it's only a very brief weather window of drier weather a brief respite from the rain but uh, the rain is on its way back by uh as early as tomorrow really for quite a few places and certainly by thursday Right, that takes us into Friday. Here comes that massive rain from the southwest on Friday. And it is suggesting a little bit of snow across the Pennines, also the Welsh Mountains. Not as much as what the GFS was showing. Um, just generally looking very, very wet with the ECM through the course of Friday. Further pulses of rain just keep coming uh, through from Friday through to Saturday. So Saturday also looking very wet across much of England and Wales. That's a pair of really wet days on this solution, Friday and Saturday. It's not until Saturday night that that system gets pushed out of the way, leaving us with wintry showers into uh, the north and west. And then we go into a drier spell with showers peppering the coast through the early part of next week as that ridge sits just to our south, just sits just to our west to uh, northwest. These are the options on the table within the ECM Ensembles today at day 10, which is going to be taking us to the 1st of November. This is from the Icelandic Met. I have 36 members of the ECM Ensembles with a mid-Atlantic ridge and taking the high up to Greenland. A trough of below average heights is uh, sitting to our east-northeast. So that's quite a cold switch. It doesn't include the uh, ECM control and operation runs the run the operation runs the run we're just looking at of course that's bringing in the winds from the north so or the northwest anyway so it's a pretty chilly solution for the early part of november Otherwise, have 15 members of the East Summer Solvers that have this ridge centred pretty much over top of the country. That would probably bring frost and fog, but would be uh, would not be quite as cold as these 36 just here because we're not pulling in the winds from like um, the north. Then we go through to two weeks' time. These are the options we've got. It's getting us to the 6th of November. So we have 19 members of the ECM Ensembles with high pressure going up to Greenland and a deep trough of low pressure underneath it through uh, the northwest of Europe. Jetstream would be doing something like that. That's cold and unsettled there on the 6th of November. That would be a cold, wet solution. We have 18 members of the ECM Ensembles with above average heights, again, out to our northwest, still pulling in quite like cold winds from the northwest, but it would be a drier snow, so that's cold dry. So these ones, uh, 19 just there, are cold wet, these ones are cold dry, and then we have another four 
14 with a ridge of high pressure building through the country and going to our east. With that one, the jet stream going a little bit further east, further north of us. That could produce some uh, overnight frost of fire, but that's probably the mildest scenario. Those 14 there are probably the mildest uh, scenario. Overall, though, it does look as though the first week of November could have some pretty chilly weather within it. Finally, this other set, SB2, is looking at these 500 mil of our heights breaking down into weekly periods. The first weekly period takes us from the 22nd to 28th of October. The coming week has above average heights to our east, below average heights to our southwest and northeast, and a Build, and a build of high pressure towards green as well. It's a complicated scenario. Essentially, we're going to be turning more unsettled in the days ahead. Then we go through to uh, week two, which would be 29th of October to 4th of November. High pressure is then centred around Iceland and going up to Greenland. A cold trough extending through the east and northeast of Europe. We are pulling in quite cold winds from the northwest with that. Mainly dry, yes, but... Um, pretty cold. Then we go through to week three, which is the 5th to the 11th of November. Greenland high blocking uh, with low pressure underneath it. That could be cold and unsettled. Cold, wet conditions there. Could be shaping up to be quite a cold first half to November, which is something that was coming through uh, within the ECM uh, update that we released earlier today as well. Uh, and then go through to week four, which is be 12th to the 18th of, uh, of November. And we have below average heights out to our northwest, above average heights down to our southwest. It's so all we'll change again as the winds are going west southwestly, and the middle part of November will then turn a great deal milder. So it is uh, mixed, definitely, but it does look as though we've got some pretty chilly weather coming up. Another deluge of wet weather as well at the end of this week. So you've had enough of the rain. It's coming back despite today's drier weather. More wet weather on the way in the uh, second half of the week, particularly Friday, possibly Saturday as well. And uh, it looks like after that goes through... It's going to get colder, I think, for a few days anyway, as we go into the start of uh, November. Right, that's it for your videos for today. We'll be back tomorrow with a five-day forecast and another look at the weather next week, 10 days as well. I would have thought, but that's all for now, and thanks for watching.